Hi everybody, there's something new for you and um, well it's not completely done now. These are the beta versions of the first three um, plugins of my new plugin series. So these are the series two plugins and um, well I made a plugin concept of how plugins should look like, how they should work, and which features are necessary or um, nice to have um, that are all common. And um, I made this concept from the things you all told me uh, that can be improved. So let's see how a plugin like this can look like. Uh, this is the blue compressor. And first thing is that we don't have blurry graphics. So um, not in regular resolution and not in um, retina displays or um, high resolution displays. And um, the plugins are scalable, just like this. And you see, I can go very um, big with the graphics uh, without having it blurry. So um, that's the first thing. Another thing um, people wanted to have is that you can type in the values for parameters. So maybe let's take the threshold and hold Alt and Shift and click the threshold. And now we can type in a value, let's say minus 23.4 and hit the green button here. And you see the threshold is minus 23.4 like you can read here. And don't worry, it's not a hidden feature. So if you forget about the mouse modifiers, click the menu, show info or help. And here is a list of the mouse modifiers. So we can fine tune the knobs with shift. We can reset the knobs with control or command on a Mac. We can link visible instances. We'll get to that later. And we can activate number typing, what I just did. And if you type in a number that is out of the range from this um, parameter. So let's imagine I go positive with my threshold, like plus 5 dB, it says no valid input. The new plugins um, all should feature some kind of graphics, uh, like this uh, compressor graph. And um, in these graphics, we see these orange um, circles, which are handles to grab them and put them around. So um, there are always um, features um, that are um, usable from the graphics directly. And there's some nice little metering. And I hope you like the concept with this opacity things. So it doesn't look just um, two dimensional and, and plain and flat a bit more eye candy. Well, as we know from Compressor 3, we can put that in scope view. So um, we see the input signal and the gain reduction in the scope. And here we can adjust the threshold. So let's see um, with another plugin, maybe the purple gate and expander plugin, what we can do with another very important feature that they all share. And this is about a problem that most of you might know. And this is, um, there is no very simple, easy, quick and dirty way to um, link instances um, of plugins. So imagine we have a, um, a gate on this track and another gate on another track. So we have two plugins and I want to control them together. So maybe I've put that to minus 30 and this to minus 20. And I say, well, um, the plugins are fine, but uh, the threshold needs to be um, adjusted at, at both plugins. I can simply hold control on a Mac or the Windows key on, on Windows. And now these controls are linked. So whatever I do, as long as I hold the modifier key, my controls are linked and they are even linked with an offset. As you can see here, we have this offset of uh, 10 decibels and we still keep the offset of 10 decibels until I reach the um, boundary of this left threshold. Now I only move the th uh, right threshold 
and so on. So you can now quick link the um, plugins in whatever you do. Of course, um, this graphics here is also uh, with circles. You can hold control and move the circles together. And that is not the end of the plugin linking thing. Uh, there's another um, permanent linking feature. Um, all the plugins, of course, um, feature MCP and TCP support, so you can put them in your mixer and drag things around uh, and see some uh, input and output and gain reduction stuff there. Um, or for the um, for the gate, you see the input level and the output level. You can adjust the um, threshold and the hysteresis here. And maybe I want to permanently link compressors across tracks for backing vocals would be a case where you want to compress every track separately, but with um with the same settings. And while mixing, you're adjusting the settings here and there and um want to, to follow the other plugins. So you can group them. Let's say we start group whatever, group two. So now this plugin joins group two. I can drag this over here and maybe over there. And now I can touch any of those plugins and the others will follow. So um, if I adjust one instance of the group, they all will be linked. And that's one reason why I put a bypass button in here. You know, we have this bypass button uh, here where we can uncheck and check this check box, but we can't uh, bypass the group. So here we have a bypass for the group. And you see it says bypass here. And as we know from Reaper, if you shift click a plugin, it will get bypassed. So I made it like this, shift click the graphics and they bypass. And I really hope that um, 16 groups for a project, um, for a mixing project uh, is enough because keep in mind, every plugin starts its own 16 groups. So you have 16 groups for compressors, 16 groups for gates, 16 groups for um, equalizers and so on. So um, you can join a group, you can start a new group, and you can even delete the group. So if I delete the group, um, all plugins that joined the group now are um, standalone. And it can be not unimportant to delete a group because um, what we can see is um, it takes uh, 0.4% um, percent of um, CPU and if I enable a group, it will be more because the plugin permanently needs to check if it needs to be updated. So grouping is a bit CPU hungry, um, but well, better CPU hungry than having no grouping at all. So let's see the last of the three. And this is the orange EQ. Of course, we can do everything we want to do with an equalizer, what we know. Um, by the way, these filters don't cramp. And there is another thing all the plugins have in common. Um, if you don't have the readout values like in the compressor plugin, um, you want to know what you um, put these um, parameters to. So the moment you click a knob, it will show you its value. In the equalizer plugin, of course, you can um, drag around these um, circles here. And um, well, um, I put LS for low shelf, then we have the peak one, peak two, peak three, the high shelf filter, and uh, we can enable the high pass filter, which will be HP, of course. And um, yeah, you can drag them around, you can scroll them for, uh, for the bandwidth. And yes, there's another interesting feature for all the Series 2 plugins. And this is in the menu. Um, we saw this groups thing. Um, well, you can uh, disable this um, automatic scaling thing. So um, it will not scale. 
no matter what you do, in case you need things like that. And um, maybe in the um, menus, um, there are additional features um, that can be settings for the plugin itself. But we have this processing thing. So you can choose if the plugin should be running on playback, on recording, and on stop. Of course, the processing uh, settings are used for the whole group. For all who wonder um, why you would need such a thing, is um, imagine you have a gate on a saxophone track. That's uh, sometimes a good idea, uh, but while recording, uh, it would be the case you want uh, to talk to the saxophonist um, with your um, talkback microphone, and you would need to hear the saxophonist from the um, saxophone microphone. So if you have a gate, you would say, well, on stop while talking, I uh, don't want the gate to process the audio so I can hear him, um, but on recording and on playback, um, the gate will be engaged. Or sometimes um, you just need um, plugins uh, while recording, and um, if you well play back the music to hear if that was a good take, uh, you don't want the plugin to run. So it's just for monitoring purpose. Or sometimes vice versa. So um, you want the plugin on playback, um, but you don't want the plugin to run on um, on recording um, because delays can be irritating or things like that. Okay, there is no delay in the Series 2 yet, but I promise there will be. Of course, I um, would be surprised if I made such big changes and um, basic concepts um, to all the plugins together and um, would make no mistakes. So um, these are the better versions today. And um, I hope you all try them and um, you leave a comment if you find a bug. Because I expect there to be bugs even uh, if I've tested them. Uh, I think you will find bugs. But don't worry, this is um, the start of the series 2. Um, so we will get rid of those bugs and um, have some nice new series 2 plugins in the future. I hope you all like it. And um, well... That's so far for today. Have fun with the plugins and bye bye.